Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got a really sweet, when in doubt, be a unicorn card. There's um, a story behind the card a little bit. So we play Taboo every other week on the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. And the challenge for our Taboo last Thursday was make a card for a friend and send it. But there's a catch. The Taboo was embossing dry or heat, um, ribbon, and flowers. With a taboo, you can't use those things in the card challenge. So here is my kitchen table stamper craft social taboo card. No ribbon, no embossing, and no flowers. Features the Hippo Happiness photopolymer stamp set and the Hippo and Friends dies. You can bundle these two products together and save 10%. Or you can join the Kitchenettes in June. For $99, you can get your very own Stampin' Up! Starter Kit. It includes $125 worth of product, a free paper pumpkin, free shipping, um, all the great new catalogs. And through June 30th only, when you join the Kitchenettes, you can choose a free stamp and tool bundle of your choice. I highly recommend the Hippo Happiness and the Hippo and Friends dies because of their versatility. Check out the Hippo and Friends dies. Get a series of four nested labels with this little clipped corner. A series of three nested labels, or kind of swoopy squares we like to call them around here. And then a series of three nested oval labels, along with the dies to cut out your hippos, your horses, your unicorns, your ewes, little lambs, butterflies, balloons, and flowers, little bow tie too. It would be so cute on the little sheep. All right, so let's get started with this card. The first thing I wanna do is a little bit of stamping. So let me grab my Stampin' Pierce mat and some ink pads. For this project, we're using the brand new Misty Moonlight. I'm really loving this color, it's a great neutral. Basic gray and flirty flamingo. We're gonna protect our Stampin' Pierce mat. I'm gonna grab a little piece of foam book. I've been back on the foam book a little bit lately here. So we'll cover that up because we're gonna stamp a card base. This is Misty Moonlight and it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Oh, look at that. I stuck my finger in the ink and then got it on my card. Oh well, you know what we're gonna do because it's Misty Moonlight. I'll line the inside of the card with Whisper White and it'll cover that right up. Just reverse the fold. <laughs> All right, see, no mistakes in stamping, just opportunities to embellish. I'm gonna be one of those overachievers and we'll decorate the inside of our card. So I'm gonna stamp a series of three little butterflies, the bottom right corner, and two up in the upper left corner so that they're just kind of fluttering across the card. Set that aside for a second and grab so Whisper White, and on the Whisper White, we're gonna do two butterflies and Misty Moonlight. And then we're going to do the two-step stamp to fill it in. The wings stamp off and then fill in. I love the two-step stamping. It gives us some great colorful images without a whole lot of fussy coloring. Now I've got a little horse here and I've got my horse pajamas. <laughs> Let's stamp our horse first on Whisper White. We're gonna ink up in Flirty Flamingo, stamp off, and then stamp our horse second generation. Give the ink some time to transfer here because we've just softened the color and we really want to get it all onto the paper. Now the horse pajamas. There are two steps, so we're going to line up over the top of our horse image. Make sure that you check multiple places. So I'm checking the little rump, checking the ears, and then checking the legs before I stamp. And what you should have now is a darker body with lighter hooves, tail, mane, and snout. Pretty cool, isn't it? All right, then 
the face. And I always have a little bit of trouble lining this up, so take your time. You've got eyes, nose, and a mouth. Once you've got the orientation, you can take that little guy that you practiced or that you stamped off and use him as a practice. Make sure that your face is going the right direction, then stamp on the real deal. I think I got it. Ah, perfect. Good deal. So there's our butterflies, our unicorn. Let's do some die cutting next. We're going to need the misty moonlight again for our greeting, so I'm just going to set it aside. We'll bring it back in in just a minute. Beside the fantastical nested labels, which we're using the smallest one there, there's also this fun little wiggly line. My kids are calling it a ramen noodle or a danger noodle. I think it's pretty funny. We're going to stand or we're going to die cut one of those and we've got the little horn for the unicorn and a scrap of silver foil. Let's get those die cut. We're going to have to run a second pass to get the other butterfly and we've got one more label. Here's our perfectly trimmed little unicorn and butterfly. Got room on this scrap, so I'm definitely going to run through another one of these labels. It's great for sentiments, I'll definitely use it. So, why not run the scrap through and grab another one of those? And then I've got this swoopy square, kind of the middle size one, and the new velveteen paper. So much fun! The velveteen paper is 112 by 12 sheet of Highland Heather, soft sea foam, and cinnamon cider, and it's got a great velvet texture which I think complements our um, hippo happiness animals perfectly. You'll see that even with that velvet texture, you still get a great stitched detail on this paper cutout. Such a cool um, detail with the stitching and the fluffy texture. All right, let's get rid of the big shot here and bring in our Stampin' Pierce mat one more time and our Misty Moonlight ink. Got that great little label and the sentiment from the Hippo Happiness stamp set is when in doubt, be a unicorn. Who doesn't need that sentiment? I'll just give that a quick stamp. Misty Moonlight on Whisper White. Such a cutie. All right, now we can close up Misty Moonlight and move that aside. All right, ahead of time, I had cut the largest scalloped stitched rectangle from the Stitched So Sweetly dies. This is Whisper White. And then I've got my Designer Series paper strips here. These guys are three and a half by three quarters. This is Soft Seas Foam, Misty Moonlight, and Flirty Flamingo. And then we've got our Highland Heather paper. Let's go ahead and adhere some of these layers to the card. Using my Stampin' Seal Plus. I really like the new adhesives. I find that the Stampin' Seal Plus likes to roll a little bit easier. It just gets itself started easier and it holds great. It's got a little perforated tape so it breaks easily. No need to do that slide to the side or check mark like with fast views, but you get a good strong hold. Oh no, I should have put my swoopy square over my designer series paper. So I'm gonna lift the edge of that just a little bit so we can slide these guys underneath. I'm gonna start with my soft sea foam and I'm going to angle from the bottom. We're going to kind of shift right and left with these at little jaunty angles. Then I'm going to bring in my flirty flamingo and we're going to put that one, slide it underneath a little bit, a little again jaunty angles. Then we'll cover the two in the center with the misty moonlight. Now add a little more stamp and seal for security and glue that guy down. Love it. Let's bring in 
our sample so you can see where we're going with this here. Next up, let's do some adhesive on the back of our stitched pieces here. I got a stitched circle. This is the one and seven eighths inch stitched circle from the Stitched Shapes die set. We're going to set that right in the center of our swoopy square and you'll see that the stamp and seal works great adhering that layer of Whisper White cardstock to the velvet paper. Then, when in doubt, be a unicorn. They're going to overlap just a little bit and show that designer series paper from behind. Can adhere that guy down. Now we need our little noodles. Got two in soft sea foam. I'm going to put just a t just a touch of multi-purpose liquid glue on the back of these. Squeeze the bottle lightly and drag it across and then spread out any larger drips. A little bit of glue will go a very long way on this. We have new adhesive sheets so you could just put a little adhesive sheet on the back of the scrap. Um, I'm gonna have to take some time to get used to having them again. We had them for a while catalog ago and now they're back and that will come in very handy for these little bits. So check out the new adhesive sheets in the new annual catalog. I think I've even got some in the cart next to me but I always forget to use them now. We're going to offset these, make them a little bit longer. So instead of stacking them up evenly, top one's a little longer on the left and the bottom one's a little longer on the right. Little butterflies, let's fold up their wings and add a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue to the back. That's going to go over our little noodles. I'm grab my other guy here. We'll put him on the misty moonlight wood grain, kind of break it up a little bit. Use my bone folder to make that adhesive adhere. And our cuny little horse, let's make him a unicorn. A little dab of multi purpose liquid glue right on the forehead there. And that silver foil unicorn horn. Drop that right in the glue. <laughs> Just so cute! Alright. Let me grab some dimensionals for the back of our unicorn. Peel the release off the dimensional bits. Well, let's pop this guy on. Oh my goodness. It's just too cute. Huh. Last up, we're going to embellish with some sequins. I have the woven threads sequin assortment here. And we had kind of realized in the live video that I did with the matching treat box that the um, terracotta tile sequins might look kind of nice even though we've stamped in flirty flamingo because they've got this kind of iridescent look to it so i'm going to audition some of these terracotta tile sequins and see how i like that they're a little bit more bold than the flirty flamingo a little bit more orange but because of the like um, oil slick iridescence I think it could work all right so up here we have Rococo Rose here we have terracotta tile from the woven threads it's all from the same sequin mix and on our original we have seaside spray I think on this one I'm gonna get a little crazy and do the Rococo Rose so what I like to do is when I'm doing sequins I like to put a dot of multi-purpose liquid glue where the sequin is going to ultimately live. And then I bring the sequin to the glue using the take your pick tool. So I'll go ahead and add the sequins. There they are, the Rococo Rose sequins. I like those. They bring a little bit more of that purple shade. And here's our Rococo Rose sprinkles and our seaside spray sprinkles. I think both work fantastic. What do you think? Leave me a comment. 
All right, you guys, if you've got any questions about the project or the current join promotion and how you can get the hippo happiness bundle for free when you join the kitchenettes, reach out. Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com and the shop 24-7, buzz over to MarissaAlvarez.StampinUp.net. Thanks for watching.